So during this video, we'll talk about the data set and variable grid in Blue Sky Statistics 10. So I'm going to talk about working with the uh, variable and the data pane. Uh, let's go ahead and open a data set. I'm opening it from the Blue Sky Statistics 10 uh, sample data sets and demos, our data sets folder. And uh, as soon as I open it, you will see that it has uh, variables of different types. I've got date, I've got uh, categorical, uh, categorical maps to uh, factor in R and nominal in SPSS. And when you edit it, uh, you can see it can take one of a defined, uh, a defined set of values. So gender can be bisexual, female, male. I have uh, ordered factor, which is known as uh, ordered in uh, R. It is called ordinal in SPSS, and uh, it's very similar to a categorical variable, but there is a ordering. So levels go from low to medium to high in the situation. Again, when you edit it, you can select one of the values here. Now, this is a fully interactive data grid. So you can type in and change values. Address is a string. So you can go and type in any arbitrary value here. So I can delete it and I can say um, New York. And uh, that will take an effect. Uh, as soon as you get out of the cell, the uh, values are edited. You can tab to go to the next cell. Uh, age is a numeric variable. Uh, we have two types, integer and numeric. Uh, this is numeric, so you could store a decimal point here. Let me edit it and make it 29.9, and you see uh, you can store decimal points. And the last variable here is vaccinated, which is uh, illogical, so it can take uh, true or false. I'm going to go into the variable view now by clicking on the tab here. And uh, here you see I have a lot of options. Uh, for instance, uh, I can add a new date variable. I can insert a new string variable at the end. Uh, I can uh, insert a uh, new factor variable at end. So now let me go and add a level to this um, this gender variable, I'm going to call it uh, a gender. And I can add multiple levels if I comma separate it, but I'll just add one here. And uh, now let me go and take a look. And here I see the new level has been added. That also means I can go under gender here and I can select uh, the new gender that I added and it gets saved to the uh, data. Cell. So I want to go ahead and open a different data set. It's a CSV file to make a couple of points. Now, when you're opening up CSV files and Excel files, sometimes uh, you may not uh, get uh, uh, or the variable type that gets assigned may not be the variable type you expect. So here I've opened up the Titanic CSV, and here I see survived uh, happens to be a numeric. I can see that by the one, two, three icon. And uh, let me go ahead and show you what happens when you do a summary on a numeric. So if I go under analysis, and I go under summary, and I go under summary statistics, and I select uh, survived, you see that I get uh, the, the, num, the numeric statistics, the min, the max, the median, so on and so forth. On the other hand, if I go right click and I say make factor, and there you see the levels are 0 and 1, and I redo the analysis by simply bringing up the dialogue from the history, you see the, out, the, the results are quite different. Here I get the number of rows where the level is 0 of the factor variable and the number of rows where uh, I have a value of one in that factor variable survived that I just moved from, uh, uh, I changed the type from numeric to factor. So just be a little careful. Also, some of the dialogues will only accept, uh, let me show you, let's say, uh, uh, multi uh This variable here can only be a factor. You cannot drag a numeric here. 
you'd get an error. So you have to be uh, aware of these different variable types. So you can go into uh, the the variable grid and just say you've got age here and you've got uh, sex here and you want to convert sex from a factor to a string let's say so you can make it a string right away and uh, if you go back to sex you'll see male and female and it's a string so it's not one of those two levels so now let's take a look at the two date variables you've got birthday and you've got start time and a birthday is in the form of year a full four year four, four digit year month day and start time has the year, month, date, as well as the uh, time. So you can uh, move the, or increase the width of the column. So the first date variable corresponds to the R date class date, and it typically will show in the form of uh, year, day, and uh, month. And the other start time is of class POSIX CT. Now you can go ahead and convert from, um, let's say, POSIX CT to string. And we'll take a look at it here. Now it's become a string. It no longer is date time. And you can put any arbitrary uh, number here. We will not do a date validation. I'm going to move it back uh, to what it was. Now the reason I did that is because just say you want to convert from string to date. Now when you convert from string to date, there's no function here that will move directly from string back to date. And the reason is that when you convert to string to date, you need something a little more sophisticated. Uh, you need to provide the format in which the year, month, and date is captured. So let me take you through the dialog. I go under variables, I go under convert, and I'll go from string to date. And uh, what I need to do is uh, I will select the string to convert to date. But before I can convert it to the R POSIX CT class, I need to tell it what format it is. So I have to choose the uh, right format. And I definitely recommend that you uh, read the help. Uh, these formats are tricky. So uh, you have the our, our quick summary help here and then you have the R help so you can click on the R help and as soon as you click on the R help we'll give you the R help in a browser and that explains what all these formats are so uh, so let me go ahead and do the right uh, hard work for you the correct format in which the string rep is represented in is four digit year dash followed by month dash followed by day and arm in its second. Let me enter a suffix new and let me go ahead and run the analysis. And here you see that we've converted from a string start time to a POSIX CD or date class. A uh, couple of things to mention really quickly is you also can convert or, or select the format when you're converting from date to string. So uh, here is our new date. If I wanted to convert it to string, I can choose what format I want the string to be in. Uh, typically, you would do that when you're saving the file uh, to, uh, to uh, Excel or even an R data file, and you want that date uh, formatted in a particular format. Uh, so with that, I will uh, go ahead and uh, end the video.